paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Someone you know? No, just admiring the decor. I was overcome by this awful, truly awful realisation that there are people in this world who don't have to spend their lives looking over their shoulder. How much is this Jimmy all going to cost? Um, £400,000. Well, why don't we call it that, then? <laughs> don't misunderstand me. I, I, I think you're brilliant, but you are a bit daunting. William says... What does my brother say? Mind you, do you know what I reckon is the most attractive feature any school can have? Caring teachers. Like William here. People like that are indispensable. Don't you agree? I mean, in general terms, he couldn't stop singing your praises. Honestly, he... Oh, sod it. Get out. Uh, Get out! Anything to report? Something's going on. And reports are coming in of something going on. Ainsley, one more impression, and I'm going to have to kill you. Now, do you want to commune with the other pond life again? Or have you remembered a few more of Nico's little ideos? I've told you everything I know. <laughs> Get her out! Get her out! Are you going to drown her? Flick is William. We are professionals. What the hell are you trying to achieve? I need that videotape back, William. Her scumbag boyfriend, who I employed in good faith, took it. And I won't tolerate that. Now, she knows where my tape is, and if she doesn't tell me, I'll... Yeah, you what? Kill her? Bury her in the garden? Oh, no! I forgot you handed in your monster badge. Humbug you are. You still think you've got the divine right to control everyone. You buy people off. You, you, you even try to buy off the past with your pathetic little monuments to yourself. But you still don't flinch from torturing a defenceless young girl. You're exactly the same as Jezard. You're no longer welcome in my house. None of you! Well, let's find you. First thing in the morning, we're off. Who said anything about the morning? You'll go now! Do you hear me now? There's a lot of arm waving and finger pointing going on. I, I think Middle Mass has given them the eve. Right. Well, if it looks like they're leaving on their own, let me know immediately. Is that clear? Well, it's very kind of you to pack for me, William, but where exactly will we be going? We'll, we'll think of something. Oh, right. Well, just as long as you've thought it all through. Look, we have to get out of this madhouse, all right? He virtually drowned Gilda. Oh, no. Really? Yes, really. Could she borrow one of your dresses? I'm not sure I've got anything short and silly enough. We don't belong with these people, all right? We could go abroad. France or Italy. You don't need a passport. What other alternatives are there? You could tell Middlemas where his stupid videotape is. I don't bloody know where it is, OK? Why 
does everyone assume I'm lying all the time? Because it's a reasonable statistical assumption. No, just shut your bloody face, OK? Thank you, Oscar Wilde. Oh, bloody... William! Yeah? Mr Middlemas has had a change of heart. You don't have to go now. Oh, right. He wants you out first thing in the morning. Oh, and Susan, about what happened. I'm really not interested. Right. What happened? Nothing, nothing happened. Will there be firemen coming? Only I've always had a bit of a thing about firemen. I'll take this one, nurse. Cheers, it. Dr. Finlay. What's going on? The fire, apparently, in the Middlemas wing. Middlemas? Oh, I see you haven't lost your memory then, Keaty. No. And I haven't forgotten how you left me behind, you bastard. The charge of me possession of a firearm, you know. I'm not getting sent down for you, Jesuit. Was that a threat, Keaty? Because you do know I'm allergic to threats, don't you? Just say it, that's all. I'm not a mug like Ernsey. You know. I had you down as reliable, Keechy. But you're actually quite a flaky person, aren't you? Are you supposed to, uh, use the lift during a fight? No! But you won't be using the lift. Huh? Going down. This way, nurse. No. Susan, take this. It's patched into my number. Just hit three. Please. Just in case you have any problems. What's taking so long? I want those buggers gone. And incidentally, I didn't like that last batch of property details you sent through to me. Two were in Bex Hill. Because I will be surrounded by old people, that's why. And I hate old people, as I believe I've mentioned. Just being near one makes me physically sick. There is no lively end of Bex Hill. Hang on a minute. What's going on? They're on the move. Bloody estate agents. And my way, I guess they're bleeding up my wood. And the authorities, like, they say that this jumbo jet crashed because of engine failure. But in actual fact, it collided with an alien spacecraft. An alien spacecraft. Yeah. There are pictures of it. They're all over the internet. Yeah, well, that's where the internet comes into its own, isn't it? Eh? Well, it's a perfect medium for rapidly disseminating total bollocks. Let the answer machine get in. No, it's probably her checking my hair. Hello? Hello? Is that Susan Smith's residence? Yep. Speak up. Are you expecting her at all? Only we're trying to identify her whereabouts. No idea, mate. You want to leave a message? No. That's OK. Thank you. We're bloody well lost him, aren't we? Who's going to tell Jezard? Perhaps we won't tell Jezard. Hello, Dennis. Well, it's not that we don't want to help. Obviously, we do. You're obviously in a bit of a pickle. A bit of a pickle? And we'll do what we can, of course, but I don't think that can include your staying here. 
It's just not practical, is it? Well, we've got to help somehow, Dennis. I know, I know. Just put the old thinking cap on. You don't know of any places that are standing empty? No. Yes, you do. There's the bank you've just closed down on the high street. Yes, thank you, Susan. That's, uh, seven branches you've butchered in six months, isn't it? The bank is clustering its services in order to respond to the realities of electronic banking. Now, I'm sorry that your branch was rationalised as part of that inevitable process. Well, at least we all got a nice day out anyway. We all got driven to the Holiday Inn where we were given counselling and a continental breakfast. Well, I don't know what you're moaning about. You've only been relocated. Oh, that's bank speak for transferred and demoted. Look, I don't enjoy closing branches, but someone's got to oversee it. Have they? Oh, so I really don't think this is getting us anywhere. Well, she started it. Dennis. Look, she swans in here, starts behaving like she's still bloody married to me. Dennis, please. Sorry, sorry. We just need somewhere where we can tuck ourselves away for a while. It's really one for the police, old boy, isn't it? I mean, lunatics on the rampage. We're going to have a baby in the house in a few days. I still say we should leave the country. There must be some way that we can provide a bit of shelter for them. Well, I think I've got an idea. I can't believe we're doing this. Camping. I've always hated camping. It was quite a bright idea for Dennis. And his tent's really quite spacious. And this is nicely out of the way. I mean, Jezard's not going to look for us here, is he? It's full of wood lice in there. And it was, it was decent of him to, to, to lend us his car. It's Claire's car. They're a two-car couple. At least we've got a breathing space, so let's just try and relax. Hello there. I'm Alice. Hi. Hi. William. Susan and Gilda. Isn't it an invigorating day? Have you camped here before? Yeah, uh, I came here a couple of years ago with my school. A teacher? Huh? Getting away from the strains and stresses, eh? I don't blame you. I mean, publishing. Oh, nothing too grand. Self-help books, mostly. You might find it a bit hot at night. Nylon doesn't breathe like good old canvas. <laughs> anyway, anything you need, just yell. Thank you. Why have I got a bad feeling about her? <laughs> England, 241 all out. Oh. Legally speaking, Martin, what happens if you lose your copy of your will? Do you have to... This is another bloody Labour fundraiser again. Hello. And hello to you. What do you want? Do you have CFAX? Why? Page 302. You'll find all the details of the fire at the hospital or... Mystery blaze, as they call it. There's not a lot left of the middle Miss Wing Bowl accounts. I'll kill you for this. Oh, of course you will. Incidentally, a little birdie, well, quite a high-ranking government birdie in actual fact, tells me that you're about to experience problems with the planning permission for the Middlemas College. Something about the land being redesignated as a nature reserve or something. Still, there you go, eh? <laughs> Who was that? Oh. Well, the shop doesn't stock anything that isn't wrapped in cellophane. Are you okay? Perhaps Gilda's right. Maybe we should go abroad for a bit till things calm down at least. Let's not panic, OK? I'm not panicking. I'm simply saying... And I'm simply saying... ..that I'm a panicker. You've always said that from, from as far back as I can remember, and it's not very helpful, actually. OK, OK. <sighs> just can't believe how pathetically wrong I've been about everything. 
two weeks ago, I thought I had a happy marriage. I thought I had a secure job. I thought I lived in a neat, civilized little country. Well, we all build our lives on some pretty shaky assumptions. I thought Dennis was too ugly to be unfaithful. God, it's been 30 odd years since I've been camping. You remember that time the tent caught fire and we had to go home early? Yeah. It wasn't an accident. Good God. That's how much I hated it. And Mum hated it too. The insects, the damp, the washing up in cold water. And you and Dad always off somewhere enjoying yourselves. Hey, almighty warriors! What? These vagabond shoes are longing to stray. That's the upside of being in the armed trade, boys. You can always lay your hands on an anti-tank missile when you need one. So what's it for? For Middlemas. I've just given his cage a good rattle see, so he's gonna come storming over here, smoke pouring out his ears. Now, when you left, Gilder and the others were still at his place, right? Yeah. Well, they were there when we left, anyway. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. OK, off to the races. Oh. By the way, I got some rather sad news about Keechi. This is what Chessard wants. Just stop and think, please! He burned down my neurological unit. That was there to save lives and prevent suffering. Maybe even cure madness and God knows what else. And he did that just to spite me. The man's willing to condemn thousands of people just so he can indulge himself. They can rebuild the unit. Nothing will be gained by blundering in and... I will not be blundering in. Yes, I know, but... No! No buts. You advise me on legal matters. This is an illegal matter. Something I've always had a bit of talent for. Are we going or not? You stay here, Martin. I said you stay here. This isn't a situation for someone like you. This is gonna be... It'll probably be obscene. You won't know what to do. You could get hurt. Oh, well, please yourself. been looking all over for... What are you doing? Making a bivouac. What for? Take my mind off things. We always used to build a bivvy when we went camping. You and Dad did. Well, you could have joined in. I wasn't invited. You didn't have to be invited, you just had to join in. Given the circumstances, don't you think it would be better if we all stuck together? I can see our tent from here, and you can see me. I'm simply thinking about our safety, so don't cast me in the role of bossy Harridan, OK? I don't! You do! I'm always down as the hard-hearted, bossy little madam while you get away with being the creative, eccentric younger brother. Oh, You've always got away with murder because you're so sensitive. All right, I'll come back to the bloody test. It got even worse when we were teenagers. Dad and Mum were much harder on me than they were on you. When you had 16, you just had carte blanche. That's why you're so easygoing, because you had the going easy. Oh, well, is that right? Well, I don't think I had the going easy, because I had a tiller the hen for an older sister. Oh, yeah, very funny. Always laugh at that one. Oh, so no laughing is one thing you never do. I should have smothered you in your sleep. Do you know that? Because the day you were born, I became invisible. Oh. Well, that's not fair on Mum and Dad. Oh, yes, it is. Especially Dad. And... Uh, 
you remember the amusing little nickname I had for you? Mm, squirt bottom. I had gastroenteritis. And you were only seven, I know. Squirt bottom, squirt bottom. Oh, don't mind me. Just collecting nettles. For soon. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today to make a brand new start of it. New York, New York. Excuse me, excuse me. You're not seriously going to start firing anti-tank missiles, are you? Oh, come on, Graham. Where's your sense of adventure? You must be getting old. We'll have the entire police force after us. Oh, yeah, like we're really worried about that. Middleman should have set off by now, and he's got to come this way. Of course. My original plan was to keep destabilising him till he just disintegrated, but I can't be bothered with all that now, so instead he's just going to get a missile up his jacksie. Back in the gutter. What's that, boss? Could I ask you just to wait here for a while, Anna? We're just doing some filming and one of our action vehicles is parked across the road. I can let you through in a few minutes. Look, mate, we're in a hurry. We've got to be somewhere. Three minutes maximum, promise. All right. Cheers. What are you filming, then? Rapid response. Cool, I like that. Safety car chases. OK, yeah, come in. Can we watch this, boss? Is that OK? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Brilliant. I said, shut it! OK. Turn over. Speed. 768, take one. And... Action! Go! It's over, Maldini. The game's finished. You're wrong, Sharky. The game's only just begun. No, it's over and you lose. Now put the gun down and let her go. You're cool, Sharky. You roll the dice. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but this is all wrong. It's all wrong. Who's in charge here? Look, I'm sorry, fellas, but all this flinging yourselves against the wall isn't fooling anybody. You ever been in a gunfight? What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm giving you my creative input. Who are you? I'm Gavin Squires, and I'm the director. Oh, well, Gavin. I was just pointing out how none of this looks right. Where's the producer? For instance, this girl here. She's got a shotgun pointing at her head, and she's looking frightened. But she should look terrified. And I mean real terror. See, when you're put in this kind of situation, there are reflex animal responses you can't control. I'll show you. Jesus <laughs> Yeah, that's it. See, you start shaking. Mr. Middlemas, I really think moment, we ought to Martin. be... Martin. Now, Gavin, all the colours drain from your face. Oh, you're going to sort of cordite grey. Perhaps makeup can make a note of that. <laughs> yeah, and something else that normally happens. Oh, yes, there it is. Animal responses, see? So, Gavin, how's this episode of yours going to finish, then? No, don't tell me. Poor old Maldini who gets shot and the girl be OK, is that it? That's how it ends? Well, that's where you're wrong, see, Gavin. Because it won't end. See, if I shoot you now, that's one story. But then there's the pain and loss for your loved ones. And without meaning to, they pass that on to their kids and so on. So when you shoot someone, you actually start lots of stories. Horrible stories for generations. That's how far one gunshot can reverberate. I hope that was helpful. 
Oh dear, there goes Gavin. Well, good luck with the series. I'll go and move the van out the way for you. That's a nice bijou residence. Oh, we've done a nice job there, Will. You can sleep the night in it if you like. You and Susan. If she wants to. Probably won't. Here you are, Billy. I bought you some tea. Susan's been looking for you again. Yeah? Well, I think it's best of us stay out of her way. Yeah, best for all of us, I reckon. Listen, Billy, I never planned to steal from you. But Nico had run into problems with the Jezard deal, and well, he said we needed your stuff to sell to get to Brazil. And I'm a kind of dozy cow that likes to be told what to do by a man. I'm sorry. It was wrong of me. Susan's dress suits you. Thanks. <laughs> so, Aunt Dorian's first day at the hospice. We said we'd visit. A bit risky leaving the site. But we promised, didn't we? I had a road to Damascus situation at the hospital. I was being shown around this neurology unit. A doctor was explaining what makes a psychopath. He started describing the symptoms, callousness, selfishness, disregard for others, etc. And I'm thinking to myself, this all sounds strangely familiar. And then it came to me. All at once, the scales fell from my eyes and I was overwhelmed by the realization that you're a psychopath. A what? Psychopath. It's a bit of your brain not plugged in, so you're going hurting people. Bloody cheek. No, I'm not criticising, I'm just saying. I only ever hurt people for a reason. All right, don't upset yourself. Well, if I'm a psychopath, you're definitely a psychopath. Nah. Nah, nah. I'm an entrepreneur. When you visited Keechi at the hospital, had he already disappeared then? Yeah. That's right, Ainsley. Come on, Teddy boy. We're heading straight down his throat. He set out to provoke you, and that's exactly... I win again. Well, I'm not sure we're supposed to be playing for money. Don't be such a misery. You can't take it with you. Matron. Hmm? Best luck away with silver. So what's the light-fingered slut doing here? It's a bit complicated. I'll explain another time. Oh, yeah, that's a very tasteful thing to say, isn't it? Sorry. There's something going on. The atmosphere between you and William is 
Well, I just don't like it, that's all. It's very pretty here. Too pretty. Makes it more painful. Boo! Auntie. Well, he gets on my nerves. Get their name stage crime done. Go on. Where's your boss, Sonny? Says he don't know. None of them know. We found something quite interesting in the basement, though. All right, then. God bless. We'll see you next week. Oh, well, no need for anyone to make any promises, is there? No, no, we'll be here. I was talking about me. Bye now. <laughs> Behave yourselves. Oh, by the way, I haven't forgiven you for the way you've humiliated my favourite nephew, so when I go, I shall be returning to haunt you. All right? What the hell are we calling on Dennis again? I guess Dennis has got a brother living in Normandy. I was thinking we could hide out there for a while. What, Nigel? You mean stay with Nigel? Being hunted down by Jezard. You don't know Nigel. He's a dentist. He's got halitosis. You could stand furniture on. I mean, coming here's a risk. What if Jezard's watching this place? Thank God. I, I thought you were the ambulance. Ah! So, Ainsley, just talk me through that again. Well, we come round the bend and suddenly I saw a fox in the middle of the road. And I swerved. You swerved to avoid a fox? Yeah. So we have given Middlemas a golden opportunity to hit my headquarters in his own time because you didn't want to hurt a smallish mammal. Well, I just did it instinctively, you know? I mean, you see a living creature in the middle of the road and you swerve to avoid it, don't you? Listen, we're going to need some planks uh, or something to get this out of here. We haven't got time. We'll hijack the first vehicle that comes along. This is humiliating, this is. You know, middle mass will piss himself when he sees this. Yeah, well, he'll... I thought I told you to turn that sudden thing off! I don't know! You know, they may just have heard us coming. Looks like they haven't been here, eh? Oh, yes, indeedy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh. Come on. That's it. Oh. All right. Oh. Okay. Got a bird plan. That's it. Oh. Brilliant. Oh. You're doing great. Well, what the hell's it doing oh. now? Oh. The computer sent it to the oh. wrong address. We need oh. an ambulance now. Oh. Yeah. You're doing really well. Oh, Dennis! Oh. It's just not good enough, frankly. Oh. Rest assured, anyway. I shall be making a Come formal on. complaint about this. Dennis! Oh. Good grief, look at that. Oh. Go and hold on, you stupid little man. Oh. 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 Last contraction. Oh. William. Bring that towel. Uh, towel. Oh, 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 o
Oh, it's a boy. Oh, congratulations. It's a beautiful little boy. Oh, 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 oh. Um, could I hold him, please? Oh, yes, of course. Any sign of No, nothing. Hello. And hello to you. Now, you're probably wondering where all the people have gone to, aren't you? Well, they're locked in your summer house at the back. Yeah, we were sorry not to find you in. Graham, Hainsey, look in the summer house. Still, we had a bit of a mooch around, but don't worry. We didn't crap in the linen cupboard or anything like that. We did find some Semtex, though. Who are you going to flog that to? IRA? Someone like that. Well, you won't be able to now. Me dad had a bit of a play with it. What? Well, it used to be a sapper in the wall. And medals and everything. His speciality was blowing up bridges. Though, of course, that was 50 years ago. But he did get a bit of a kick from stuffing the Semtex under the floorboards, beneath each of your load-bearing walls. And if his calculations are correct, you should hear the bang about... That blood is sorted then, isn't it? Can't sleep. Look, all I'm saying is, I think at some stage we'll have to tell her. Why? What possible good will that serve? I just think Susan has the right to know, that's all. Look, I, I, I don't want to discuss this anymore, OK? Susan, what are you doing up now? Snifter? It's malt. I was just about to go to bed. Oh, come on, it'll make you sleep. Not easy sleeping on a night as sticky as this. I hope you don't mind my taking the liberty, but I thought you might like to read this. How to Make a Man Grow Up. By Ruth Stenhouse. She's very, very good. Massive sales in the States. 
There's a very uplifting chapter on sister-brother relationships. Oh. She really is the most wonderful writer. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, we stock all her titles. I belong to me. Empowerment for beginners. Make friends with your inner child. That's very, very good. And then, of course, all our biggest sellers. There's Reach for the Self, The Love You Deserve. I can recommend them all. Yes. Actually, I'm in the process of writing a self-help book. Really? Mm. Oh, that's splendid. I think it will fill a gap in the market. It's called, just fucking get on with it. Right. Well, it's time I was off to bed. Good night, then. Don't forget your book. I feel safe on my own. It's a story of my life. Billy. Yeah. I know we got off to a dreadful start, and I know that was my fault, but. Well, I was wondering if maybe you and I. Shh, just. just. go to sleep. Gilda. Still asleep. In the bivouac. Oh. No, not oh. She's scared. All right, so there's no oh about it. You're going to start pushing all your buttons again. I don't have any buttons. You know, it's funny. I had thought that maybe this whole ridiculous nightmare might somehow bring us closer together, but that's obviously a silly expectation. We're clearly not cut out for this brother-sister rubbish. So I think it would be better if we didn't bother. William! Susan! Great news! Don't usually come? No. No, I know. I felt like doing a bit of remembering, I suppose. Did you ever love Mum? Like in the beginning? Did you love her? No. Oh. I see. Still. At least you came to pay your respects. Yeah. But not to her. I mean, Jezard is going to be out of action for months. So the coast is clear for you to go home, I reckon. What about when he gets out of hospital? He won't be the same man. I think you can relax. Oh, I've forgotten how to relax. But it is good news, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll go and tell Gilda. How did you know we were here? It was supposed to be a secret. Um, I asked Trevor to follow you. 
You did what? You've got a real... Let's go for a walk, shall we? So, where's Middlemas? So, who was she? It started in 1950. I was top man by then. Ran a lot of territory. I was feared. But when I was with Mary, well... I would experience feelings that, uh... Well, there were feelings I just couldn't afford. I couldn't trust them. She was too kind and loving to let go at first, but I thought, well... If I'm cruel and cold-blooded enough, she'll give up on me eventually, and in the end she gave up. All the life went out of her. She just died inside. Then moved to Ipswich. And this was after your married mum? Oh, yeah. Well, before and after. In fact, I married your mother to try to discourage Mary, but she just kept on loving me. It was... It was awful. Anyway, after she'd gone to Ipswich, I heard she'd had a baby by me. So I went to see her. She was just coming apart at the seams, all thanks to me. But I paid for the lad's schooling and stuff. He was a bright lad. Where is he now? We've just put him in hospital. Oh, shit. Oh, no, no, you're lying. Uh, he doesn't know it, of course, but Jezard is your brother. Well, half-brother. No. No! Yes. And he's a monster, isn't he? But his mother was an angel. So what does that make me? It makes you what you bloody are!